Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning back in. It is Tuesday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, and we are glad that you are here with us. And the bonus for this Cinco de Mayo is it is also Taco Tuesday. And so, oh man, uh, go out, get yourself some Mexican food, enjoy the day, and remember as we move forward into our time of devotions this morning that God is still seated on the throne. He is still in control, and there is nothing that escapes the purview of His will. During this time of pandemic, this time of crisis, this time of of uncertainty for many of us. And, and as we look forward, we, we still don't know exactly what the future holds. And, and that just should lean, uh, ca challenge us to cast our cares upon Christ, to, to lean on him and depend on him. And remember the promises that he gave to us, that he cares more for the sparrows, but yet he provides for them, does he not? And how much more valuable than sparrows are we? Will he not take care of us? Will he not meet our needs? And I know, and we're excited and seeing God answer prayers and, and the reopening of some aspects of our economy and, and people, some people being able to get back to work. And, and I know that can be also challenging as you may look and say, well, I can't open my business or, or I can't open my doors yet or I can't go back to work yet. I just challenge you to trust the Lord during this time as we do because we remember He is seated on the throne. He is good. He is gracious and He is merciful. Now, as you guys have your Bibles, I trust, handy with you, if you guys will open them up to Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to start uh, and we're going to look at one verse and then we're going to back it up a little bit. Uh, but in chapter 12, verse 14, the author of Hebrews says, strive for peace with everyone and for holiness without which no one will see the Lord. We're going to dive into that in just a second, but to give us some context here, we have to understand that the author of Hebrews has just laid out in in his, uh, in his chapter 11, that there's these great cloud of witnesses, these great heroes of the faith that have gone before us, that have paved the way as an example for us to follow. And he gets to chapter 12 and he says, hey, because we have such a great cloud of witnesses that we can draw from it for, for encouragement and example, he says, let's lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles and run the race that is set before us with endurance. Now, we, as we think about that, you can picture some people going, how do I do that? What do you, what do you mean? Lay aside the sin. I, I can't, I feel like I, I can't overcome this. I feel like I can't deal with this. I, I don't even know where to begin. And, and you get that sense as, as the author writes to this same church, this same group of people in, in chapter 12, verse 12 and 13, where he says, Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight the paths for your feet. He says, look, don't be discouraged by this encouragement, because sometimes the exhortation to live a godly life can be daunting because Oftentimes, we don't know where to begin. We don't know where, where or how transformation is going to take place. We don't know um, what it looks like to, to maybe get rid of sin in our lives because maybe it's something that we've just held on to for so long. But he says, hey, look, lift your heads, lift your feet. And he says, make straight a path for your feet. Set your eyes and fix your focus on Christ and then pursue him. Then make that your only aim. Your only goal is to get to be more like Christ, to get closer to him, to be with him, to, to understand him more, to know him more. And he says, when you do that in verse 13, so that that which is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. He says, when we pursue Christ, those things that cripple us in life, that sin that may be lingering or that sin that God has revealed to you in your life. He says, look, that can either continue to cripple you or you can pursue Christ through that, surrender it over to him. And as a result, what's going to happen is you are not going to continue to be lame or crippled by your sin, but rather you are going to be healed. God is going to take that from you. God is going to, going to bring that out of your life if you allow him to, and he's going to put his righteousness and his holiness in place of that through the process called sanctification. But he says, you have to want that. You can't sit there and mope in the, in your sin and go, oh, you see what we do as Christians sometimes is we like to play the defeatist, uh, the defeatist person, right? Oh, I'm never going to be overcome that. I'm never going to be able to, to, to have victory. I've had this for so long. I might as well just sit here in my sin and wallow. Well, let me just tell you what, that is not biblical and that is not godly in any way. We have victory through Jesus Christ. We have victory because he rose again from the dead. 
And now we just need to surrender our lives, pursue him, and let God do the work that he desires to do in us. Let him do the work that he desires to do. And this is what, he, this is what brings us into verse 14. Strive for peace with everyone. We can go into a whole nother topic uh, about how we need to pursue right relationships with people that if we've sinned against them, confess our sin and, and seek restoration. Or if somebody has offended you, go to your brother in love and say, hey, you know what? I just need to, to get this off my chest because I love you and I don't want there to be anything between us. So strive for peace with everyone. But he says this, strive for holiness, not holier than thou, not where I am more moral and think I'm more superior than you because I'm a Christian. No, the holiness of God he's talking about. To be set apart from sin, but also to have that infusion of what is right and good and pure into our lives. To be holy as he is holy. He says, strive for that. Strive for holiness. Why? Why is this important? Well, he tells us right here in verse 14. He says, because without holiness... Without God making and transforming us and making us more holy after the image of his son, he says, no one will see the Lord. What people need, especially today, what people need is to not look at Christians and see a bunch of hypocrites, to see a bunch of people who, who are okay and justify sin, to see people who, who make no effort whatsoever to, to have their sin problem dealt with. They have no surrender. They just continue living as though they have fire insurance, but don't care about the rest because it doesn't matter. And let me tell you what, no one sees Jesus when we allow sin in our lives. When we permit sin to have a place in our hearts, he says, no one sees Jesus. But if we strive for holiness and to be holy as he is holy, that's when people see God at work in your life. And that's when people see Jesus. Let me tell you what people need. They need to see Jesus today. Will you strive for holiness? As you lay aside the sin and the weight that so, so easily pulls us down as we fix our eyes upon our Savior and allow him to do the work within us to make us holy as he is holy. A little bit of a prayer challenge for you guys this morning. And again, we just want to we just want to challenge you to continue to pray um, for the the governments this morning, um, uh, and also for those. I just want to say those that are are going to be re-entering the workforce um, and re reopening their small business. Will you pray that God would give them wisdom? Uh, that God would give them uh, also the, the provisions that they need to open safely to keep people safe as they come back into their stores. And, and with all of that too, that, you would, that, that he would just be working in our culture and our society to, to make people feel as though they can re-enter a, a normal kind of way of living. But in that, can I also challenge you to pray that as we begin to reopen our economy, as we begin to uh, get back to, to what we maybe had before just in a different way, can I just challenge you to pray that, that people will not lose the good things that God has done through this time of social distancing and social isolation? Will you, will you, can we just pray for each other that we would see the good things that God has done through this, maybe in our families, in our home lives, in our, even our, our, our devotional life and life with Christ? And will we cling to those as important and not willing to let the good things that God has done go from what we've learned during this time. So thank you so much for tuning in. We encourage you guys to to pray, uh, but also just to, to think about what, what God says to us from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 today. If you guys want it, uh, to check out our webpage, you can at www.nipiganbaptist.com. There's all sorts of good stuff there for you. And a new edition this week, we are going to be putting some uh, links up as well for a, uh, a great ministry resource for your kids. I know it's been tough to find anything um, that, that is, that is super solid and yet can capture the attention, uh, of young people. And, uh, a good friend and colleague of mine, Mark Mast has some great resources and we'll be posting those on our webpage for you, uh, as well, as well as in the, 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 uh, description of this video on YouTube. Uh, so you can check those out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow.